Well, hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Automotive Insight. So today we're gonna give you a scenario. You've got a car that has a misfire. You pull it in, you scan the codes, and let's say it's a P0303, which is a cylinder three misfire. That's the only code that you have. You pop the hood, lo and behold, it's a V6, and the intake is covering up cylinder three so that you can't pull the coil out, you can't get to the plug, you really can't get to anything on that cylinder. What do you do? Do you just chunk some parts at it, a coil, plug, injector, or what? What do you do? So we're gonna show you a couple ways to uh, at least get you narrowed down to what is the most likely cause using an oscilloscope. So let's get to it. I mean, I realize that this car, we can get to everything really easy, but our scenario is that the stuff is hard to get to. So we're gonna to try to get to the fastest way to be able to figure out what's wrong with it. So when it comes to misfires, uh, you wanna use all of your senses, including common sense. Uh, the thing's puffing out, sweet smelling white smoke. You can kind of assume you got a head gasket issue. If it's puffing out white smoke that smells like fuel, you probably got a stuck open injector. If it's knocking or something or, or spitting back to the intake, you probably have mechanical issues. Now. We're assuming that basically the only symptom this car has is a misfire. So one thing that is a good idea to do is kind of get engine mechanical out of the way. And what I mean, what I mean by engine mechanical is compression. Uh, if you're working on a car that's worth $2,000 and it's going to need $2,000 worth of head work, that might be as far as you need to go. And the customer say, you know what, I'm going to sell it, trade it in, get something else, whatever. Um, so, an easy way to do that is called a relative compression test. So the idea is that if it's only missing on one cylinder, we know that the rest of the cylinders at least have enough compression for them not to be misfiring. So we can check the compression relative to the other ones by using stuff that's already on the car, meaning the starter and the battery, and an inductive amp clamp. So let's get to that. So uh, we got our leads hooked up. There's basically two ways to do it and, and full uh, transparency. The voltage way of doing it, we haven't really been able to get very good uh, results with it. So you can use just voltage. I've seen guys do it before, but uh, we're not having much luck with it. So uh, we're gonna use the, uh, the amp clamp. So uh, this goes up to 650. Uh, amps and what we're gonna do is we are going to you can just hook it around all of your grounds if you want to or uh, this car the wire that goes to the starter is fairly easy to get to so we will just uh, hook up to that and you want to make sure that your clamp is closed so let's go get the scope set up so uh, this is an all tell and Really, we're just kind of playing around with this. We haven't really used this much. Um, this one actually has a preset for the exact uh, meter that we're using. So we're gonna pick that meter. And then even though it's set up for uh, 650, realistically, a starter is probably gonna draw maybe 200 amps. So we have a 200 amp set. So right now we are recording so let's go ahead and spin this thing over one thing to bear in mind is that uh, you are going to want to disable the ignition or the fuel or do something to keep it from starting some cars have clear flood modes other cars you're gonna have to pull a, a injector fuse or something to keep it from running but anyway let's get this recording going So each peak is a compression stroke. So right now, basically you're looking for a difference between them. And so these are all looking pretty good, which means that this car 
in all likelihood does not have a compression issue. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pull a spark plug out of this thing and show you what the difference would be. All right, so you can see we have compression, compression, compression. There should be another one right here, but we're not drawing any amperage because that one's not doing anything. So uh, this is a pretty good capture here. One, two, three, nothing. One, two, three, nothing. One, two, three, nothing. So that's what it would look like if you had one that say had a uh, uh, broken valve spring or a hole in the piston or something. For some reason you don't have compression and you can hear it too. like you can hear that kind of a gallop, things like that. It gets harder to hear that on like a V8 or something that has more cylinders, but um, it's still gonna show the same thing. The amp clamp doesn't lie. That's the type of pattern that you're looking for. And if you wanted to, to further confirm which cylinder it is, you could put a trace on say number one cylinder and if you know the firing order, you can figure out exactly which one is low. So anyway, uh, that's what the compression test would look like. So let's move on to something else. All right, so assuming that your relative compression test was good, the next thing I usually try to hone in on is the most common problem, which would be a bad coil. Briefly, let's talk, talk about coils. Um, you'll generally speaking have two wire, three wire, or four wire coils. Um, two wire coils, generally speaking they're all going to share a power and they will have individual grounds that run back to the ecm and the ecm is what controls the ground thereby uh firing the coil three wire coils are a little bit different they generally speaking are going to share a power altogether. they are going to share a ground altogether. And then they will have a signal wire coming from the ECM. It's usually a five volt signal, but uh, it, it doesn't really matter. The point being is that they share powers and grounds and they get a signal from the ECM. Four wire coils are just like three wires. So they're gonna share powers, they're gonna share grounds, they're gonna have a signal wire from the ECM, and then they're gonna have a confirmation signal that generally speaking, all the confirmation signals are gonna tie back together and then go back to the ECM. That's why uh, if you've ever had a car that had a, like a cylinder three misfire, it'll have like a PO303 and a, it'll have a, a PO353, which is a primary circuit side. It's not uncommon to get every single primary code so you'll get a po 351 352 through the whole thing it doesn't mean that they all need coils it means that there is something going on that is sending a weird signal back on that confirmation circuit and the computer's freaking out about it and so an easy way to do that would be to pull the fuse that controls the coils now this car is a little bit odd it actually controls the coils and the injectors from the same fuse that might work out to our benefit. It might uh, work out so that they fire at the exact same time as the coils do. And then, uh, you know, it makes things harder to decipher. But anyway, what we did was uh, we pulled the fuse out of it. And uh, we just ran this little jumper wire. You want to come in here and look at this? We just ran this jumper wire here and we have an, a smaller inductive amp clamp on it. And we're going to be measuring the uh, current draw that the coils and the injectors do. So let's take a look at that. <clears throat> all right so looking at our data here the larger ramp is our coil the smaller ramp is a an injector so uh this is known well 
in our case, this is good. This is what a known good one would look like. But we can see that uh, this is actually going to work out in our favor. So we can check both uh, coils and injectors just from that same fuse. So let's uh, rig it up with a bad coil and see what that looks like. So this is our bad one. So you can see how this ramp looks different from this ramp and from this ramp and from this ramp and then the next one ought to be our bad one. So the coil, the current ramp looks totally different on the faulty coil. So uh, that's a good, a good test to do if, uh, if you have a, a failed uh, coil secondary. So let's, uh, let's rig an injector problem and see what that looks like. Now what we've done was we've put our good coil back in and we've actually uh, wired a Noid light in series on an injector. So what that's gonna do is gonna increase the resistance so that if you ever had a bad injector and it tells you to measure the resistance across the injector, it should be whatever, four ohms. This is going to be closer to like eight ohms or something. So uh, we've got that hooked up. So let's see what that pattern looks like. You ready? All right, so these are our coils. Now, if you see here, this current ramp for the injector is here. This one's lower, higher, higher, higher. This next one will be lower. Higher, 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 lower. So this uh, injector is not pulling the same amps that the other injectors are. So uh, that's what that would look like. And uh, you could go further depending on whatever these diags tell you. All right, so the last thing we'll do is we'll show you if you are missing, say, a uh, like an ECM turn on signal to a coil. Um, what you're going to find is that you'll have the current ramps for however many cylinders you have minus one. And so we'll show you what that looks like and we'll show you uh, a, a kind of quick test, sort of depending on how easy the wiring is to get to. Uh, most of the time, if we're in our scenario of it being hard to get to, you'll have to go uh, back probe the ECM. But we'll show you that. We'll show you what the, uh, what the uh, ignition amperage is going to look like first with it missing a coil. We just have ours disconnected. Ready? Yeah. So this is pretty self-explanatory. You got one, two, three, missing. One, two, three, missing. So uh, that's pretty simple. And if you, another thing that you might notice is that it has killed the injector pulse. Uh, that's one thing to, to keep in mind. If you've got a car that has a dead misfire and the ECM knows it has a dead misfire, it is going to kill the injector to prevent damage to the catalytic converter. So uh, for our last, the, in, in the last scenario, we showed that if the coil wasn't firing at all, uh, what you should do at that point is to uh, go to the, whatever the, the signal is to tell the coil to turn on, go to that signal. So we just have it right at the coil. I know that doesn't fit our scenario here. You're probably going to have to go uh, back probe the ECM to do that, but we're going to show you what that looks like. So let's get to that.
So this is the ECM sending the signal out to the coil. So um, if you're missing that, then you're looking at some kind of an ECM problem or something to that extent. Well, guys, that's going to wrap this one up. Uh, this is basically just a, uh, a quick, down and dirty, practical use of using oscilloscopes to help you narrow down uh, what your problem is. This is not going to tell you exactly what's wrong with it. I mean, if you've got rodent damage or something, you're going to have to get in there and figure it out. But it's a much easier sell to the customer to say, hey, Mr. Miss Customer, uh, the car's missing. It is. It has something to do with the fuel injector. We're going to have to pull this uh, intake off of it. If it needs an injector, which it likely does, then uh, we'll go ahead and quote that. It's going to be X dollars. Or if it's got some kind of a harness damage or, or something along those lines, you know, we'll tackle that as we get there. But it makes uh, approaching the customer with what the problem is much more palatable and it keeps you from getting burned in the end. And like I said, these are just quick, easy things to do. Um, all told, for all of that stuff that we just did, you're in it maybe 15, 20 minutes, and you've got a pretty good idea of at least where the problem is, what system it is. It sucks, squeeze, bang, blow. It's got to be one of those. So uh, this is a good way to narrow in on it. There are a ton of things that you can do with oscilloscopes. I'm slowly getting into the, the habit of trying to use it first. Ordinarily, I'm all for swaptronics. You know, you want to, you got a misfire on this car, the coils are easy to get to, I'm going to swap coils around. But sometimes it, it doesn't work like that. Um, V6s, front wheel drives, a lot of times they're running the uh, intakes over them. You can't get to anything, you can't see anything. Uh, doing th learning things like this is going to help you in the long run. It's going to help you diagnose things correctly, and it's going to be able to set your customers up for realistic expectations. You're not just guessing that it's a coil or a plug or an injector or whatever, and then it turns out the car is, you know, it's got a burnt exhaust valve. So um, if you have a scope, get it out, play with it. Um, it helps to, if you have something that has, bad parts as well as good parts so that you can compare the two. But you can go online and look at uh, known good waveforms of, of all kinds of different things. There's all kind of uh, cam crank correlation stuff on the internet. You can find all kinds of stuff on it. But yeah, like I said, if you got a scope, go play with it. If you don't have a scope, look into getting one. Um, it's a pretty good return on investment uh, depending on what you get. Pico seems to be kind of the industry standard. Uh, we were using an Altel. I have a Snap-on. Uh, to be honest with you, I like Pico the best. We have a Pico at work, and it works great. Um, but yeah, just get something, play around with it, and uh, see what you do. Anyway, that's going to wrap things up for today, guys. Hopefully, we earned a thumbs up from you. Let us know what you think down in the comments section. We have new content for you every single week, so consider subscribing to the channel. And with all that being said, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.